Hello, this video is all about the natural causes of climate change. Um, there are human and natural causes of climate change, but this video focuses on the three natural causes of climate change. Okay, before we begin, uh, here we have a graph showing the climate over the last 11,000 years. Um, this graph is a little bit unusual in that we begin over here, this is today where we are at zero, and it goes in this direction backwards in time. Okay, so we've got uh, here, we, here's where we are today, 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, 6,000 years ago, 8,000 years ago, and then 10, 11,000 years ago. From here, we can see that the climate has varied a lot in the last 11,000 years. The blue parts are where it was below the average temperature, and the red parts are where it was above the average temperature. So if we have a look at about 9,000 years ago, we can see this was the end of the last uh, large ice age. More recently, we can see uh, about one to one and a half thousand years ago here, uh, we had a, a period called the medieval warm period. In fact, it was so warm in this period that you could grow grapes in the south of England. And then more recently over here, we had a mini ice age. Um, and in this period, you could actually go ice skating on the River Thames because it froze over uh, every winter. Just a reminder, the uh, areas uh, the periods of time even that are above average in terms of temperature are called interglacials and the colder periods that are blue on here are called glacials okay now if we go back further this graph goes this is where we are today on this graph and this is a million years ago so this is much much further back we can see even then the temperature varied uh, between interglacials between warm periods and glacials which are cold periods so even a million years ago, and that's before humans were, were um, around, um, the temperature was varying quite a lot. It was going between hot and cold periods. So what we need to understand today are what are some of the natural causes that have changed the climate in the past? Okay, the first of those is called solar variation. Solar variation uh, just means how much radiation, how much heat is being emitted from the sun. Um, and we often talk about these black spots on the sun, and these are called sunspots. Now, if there are more sunspots, and I've circled the sunspots here, it means there's more radiation being given off from the sun. So where we see more of these black dots on the sun, there's more radiation being given off at those points, and therefore more heat coming towards Earth, and that makes the Earth much warmer. Okay, so sunspots, when they appear on the sun, they emit more solar radiation, uh, and therefore they make the earth warmer. The second natural cause of climate change is volcanoes. Now when a volcano erupts, like this picture over here, it kicks out a huge amount of ash. So you can see the ash cloud over here. When the ash rises up into the atmosphere, it, um, it acts a bit like a blanket. So if we have a look at this diagram over here, you can see the big ash cloud has come out of the volcano. What that then means is the sun's rays, the solar radiation from the sun, it hits the ash clouds and they get redirected, they bounce off and go back into space. Therefore, on the ground on Earth, it means it's much colder. Okay, so when we get more volcanoes erupting or we get very big volcanic eruptions, the ash blocks the sun, this blocks the solar radiation, and that makes the Earth much colder. And we can see this is a picture taken from the International Space Station. Uh, you can see here um, a huge ash cloud coming out of a volcano. Um, what's, what then happens is the sun's rays will hit that ash cloud, reflect back into space. And so on Earth, below the ash clouds, uh, it will be much, much colder. OK. Um, OK. And on to the final uh, natural cause of climate change. This is something called the Milankovitch cycles. Now, Milankovitch cycles describe how the Earth moves around the Sun. So we know that the Earth is rotating once every 24 hours, and we know that it goes around the Sun in a circular motion uh, every 365 days. But it doesn't always go around the Sun in the same way. And there are three Milankovitch cycles that you need to know about. The first one is called axial tilt. Now we know that the Earth is lent over, it's tilted over on an axis, currently at 23.5 degrees, but about every 40,000 years, 
the axes changes slightly. The Earth wobbles slightly on the axes, um, and therefore, when it wobbles slowly, uh, when it wobbles towards the sun, it gives more heat, and when the Earth wobbles away from the sun, it gives us a little bit less heat. The other one is called precession. Now, precession. The uh, best way to think about this one is a bit like a spinning top. If you spin a spinning top around, it will spin for a while and then it will start to wobble. Okay, And the Earth does the same thing. Uh, it wobbles slightly. So remember, it spins once every day, once every 24 hours. But it wobbles slightly, uh, roughly every 19 to 24,000 years. If it's leaning towards the sun, it gets more heat. If it leans away from the sun, it gets less heat. And the third and final Milankovitch cycle is called eccentricity. Now, eccentricity describes how the Earth goes around the sun. It either goes in a circular motion like this, and when it goes like this, the seasons tend to be more predictable, um, and we find typically it's warmer, a warmer period. But when it changes, uh, and it goes in what we call an elliptical orbit, which looks a bit like an eye shape, um, the seasons are much more varied. And when it's further at this, this point here and this point here, it's further from the sun, so it's a bit colder. I'm going to show you, show you eccentricity in a little bit more detail. So we've got the sun in the middle here. So if there's a circular orbit, the Earth rotates around the sun like so. And typically it's warmer, but the seasons are also much more predictable because the Earth is not moving away from the sun. It stays the same distance roughly as it goes around the sun. But if we get an elliptical orbit, which is the one that looks a bit like a rugby ball or an eye shape, the Earth moves around the sun like this. So it might be colder at certain periods where it's further away, but warmer at certain periods where it's closer. Okay, so we get more variation between the seasons. So eccentricity describes how the Earth moves around the sun. When the Earth moves in a circular orbit, it is typically warmer and more predictable. When the Earth moves in an elliptical orbit, there is more variation because the Earth is closer to the sun at some times during the year and further away from the sun at other times during the year. OK, so I'd like you to have a go at this question here. So which of these is true? Is it this one or this one? So just have a read of them and then point at the screen. Do you think it's this one up here or this one down here? Okay, we should have chosen. Sunspots make the Earth hotter because the sunspots, the black spots on the sun, emit more solar energy. Again, can you choose which of these two boxes is correct? Okay, we should have chosen makes the Earth colder because the ash blocks the sun's radiation. Remember, the ash that's coming out of the volcano uh, acts like a blanket, stops the sun's rays, and makes the world colder. And finally, this is an exam question that came up in last year's GCSE. Explain one way in which the Milankovitch cycles can affect global temperature. This is a three mark question, so you need to follow point, explain, develop, P, E, D. Okay, so can you pause the video, have a go at this question now, and then restart the video when you're done. So pause on the video in three, two, one. OK, so this would be a model answer. Um, you could have talked about the other uh, types of Milankovitch cycles, but we talked here about eccentricity. So the eccentricity of the Earth's orbit changes. That's your point. So sometimes in the year, the Earth is closer to the sun. That's your explanation. And then to develop, which increases the temperatures at those times of the year. OK, if you have any more questions about this, please speak to your geography teacher.